Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Thursday, July 25th, 2013. Just about two and a half miles out of the northwestern Spanish city of Santiago de Compostela, a train crash occurred yesterday about 8.40 p.m. local time. 78 people were killed. About 150 or so are injured at this point. It was Spain's deadliest train accident since 1972. In this instance, all eight cars of the train went off the track. Uh, it was largely filled with Catholic pilgrims heading to Santiago de Compostela for a religious festival, which uh, subsequently was actually canceled. The train belonged to the uh, Spanish state-owned Renfe. It started at Madrid Atocha Station and was scheduled to end its journey at El Ferrol, about 60 miles north of Santiago de Compostela. It was uh, not one of Spain's fastest trains, the TGV equivalent called AVE. It was a relatively luxurious version that uses the same kind of track as, train, as Spain's fastest trains. The Spanish Prime Minister is on the scene, apparently it uh, is a terrible situation. Uh, the government has ruled out uh, any terrorist attack as being a possible cause. Uh, Insurance Insider is reporting that the uh, insurer Allianz is the insurer for compulsory passenger personal accident cover for the Spanish Railroad. And QBE, the Australian insurer, is on the risk for third-party liability losses. Um, so there's going to be uh, claims coming to them. The broker Willis uh, broke the, uh, the deal for the Spanish rail operator Renfe. Meanwhile, in the Gulf of Mexico, that uh, burning uh, methane gas rig has partially collapsed. Uh, firefighters are continuing to work on the blaze. There's now a uh, discussion of uh, drilling a relief well. Of course, we're all familiar with that from the BP Macondo spill uh, several years ago when the relief well was drilled in an attempt to uh, intercept the uh, burning oil vein. Um, so in this instance, it'll be an attempt to intercept the burning gas vein. Tropical storm Dorian has gained some strength as it is beginning to move westward across the Atlantic. The storm is still about 700 miles west of the Cape Verde Islands. It's quite far out, just off the uh, coast of West Africa. It's moving west-northwest at about 17 miles per hour, and it already has winds of 60 miles per hour. Obviously, there are no current threats to land, but you can be sure the National Hurricane Center is watching this carefully. Within the past eight days, a uh, large uh, container ship uh, called the Hansa Brandenburg has experienced an ordeal. First, it caught fire in the Indian Ocean. Um, actually, uh, it was in the, uh, not in the Indian Ocean, it was traveling from Singapore to Durban. Um, it it uh, caught fire on uh, Friday. It uh, sustained a tremendous amount of damage to the superstructure as well as to the containers that were on board. Apparently, there were 1,740 containers on board. The ship is under tow right now, being brought into uh, Mauritius. The uh, ship is owned by Lenhart and Blumberg. Uh, they don't yet have a complete idea as to the extent of damage on the ship because they're going to have to wait until it gets into port until they look at it. This is the second major fire on a container vessel in the area this month. The MOL Comfort, of course, uh, sank uh, just a week ago and while it was being towed to Oman. Um, the extent of the damage for the UK protection and indemnity insurers that are based in Lloyd's is unknown. Um, the uh, difficulty comes on the back of the Comfort loss last month in addition to what's expected to be about an $83 million haul of machinery claim, insurers are staring at a bill from the ML Comfort uh, valued in the hundreds of millions of dollars after that vessel lost all 4,382 containers it was carrying. So we're going to see what happens with the uh, 1,750 or so containers that are on the Brandenburg. Evan Greenberg, the CEO of ACE, has joined the chorus now of people complaining about the uh, influx of money coming from Wall Street. He said uh, cat insurance, cat reinsurance has declined about 5% internationally and about 15% based in the U.S. He said you've got alternate capital coming in, capital markets in addition to traditional players, so you've got that pond with more people drinking out of it. He said if we like the uh, trade, we'll write it. If not, you've seen what our track record is. We'll shrink our business and we'll have no trouble doing it. An analyst with BMO Capital Markets said that uh, Greenberg and his team may face premium uh, revenue pressure 
in so far as not being able to generate it. He said uh, it's going to present the problem if the economics of the business do not meet their own guideposts. Uh, Greenberg said there's plenty of capital in the reinsurance industry because the results have been good. Many will profess undivided discipline and being able to say no to certain risks that don't have the right premium. They'll chase market share. For many of them, their standards are not the same as ours. And for many, it's all they do for a living, so they feel compelled. Greenberg believes that uh, ACE's uh, very broad market segment uh, will help it uh, pick and choose where it should write. The annual report from the Association of Bermuda Insurers and Reinsurers has come out as to the financial effects of that industry on Bermuda. Reinsurers employ some 1,600 Bermudians and contribute about $816 million annually to the Bermudan economy. However, it's noted that their spending and headcount is slowly dropping in Bermuda. 2007 was their high. Uh, the uh, problems supposedly are the detrimental 2010 payroll increase, as well as historical difficulties in securing work permits for non-Bermudians and the high cost of talent. Um, however, that is a pretty big bill, $816 million that comes into the uh, coffers in Hamilton. Uh, just this morning, there was a derailment of a CSX cargo train in the port of Tampa. Uh, apparently, uh, 15 railway cars uh, derailed this morning. Uh, they were carrying ethanol. Uh, CSX officials are getting uh, the proper equipment to the scene right now. Firefighters are fighting it with uh, foam. Uh, no injuries have been reported. Here's an interesting story. Uh, just today, a uh, report was released uh, talking about uh, what caused the demise of a 747 owned by United Parcel Service uh, that had taken off from Dubai back in 2010. Um, one of the main causes had to do with smoke in the cockpit. You'll recall at that time that there was a big push to make fire detectors and smoke detectors in cargo planes at the same level that they are in passenger planes. That has now since been done. Interestingly enough, what the plane was carrying was, get this, lithium batteries. Lithium batteries, of course, are now being used by the 787 Dreamliner and Boeing. And British officials at Heathrow Airport have traced the fire in the Ethiopian uh, 787 last week to a lithium battery that uh, activated in the tail of the plane, having to do with an emergency geolocator. The FAA has already banned lithium batteries uh, as cargo on passenger planes, but they are allowed on cargo planes. Meanwhile, of course, Boeing has actually put them into the 787. The crew in the Dubai flyer, uh, Dubai crash, reported a fire on board the 747 about 22 minutes into the flight. They tried to return to the airport, but there was so much smoke in the cockpit that they couldn't see the control panels. Uh, the captain said, uh, I've got no oxygen, I can't breathe, according to a transcript of the cockpit voice recorder. He told the co-pilot, you fly. When the first officer was unable to see outside the cockpit or see the control board, the dashboard with the instruments on it, the plane flew right by the airport and crashed while it was circling the airport. You have to wonder whether or not uh, Boeing was aware of that in 2010. I'm sure they were, but the 787 was uh, at that time already late for delivery. We'll see what happens. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching.